Hi, today I'm in the Art Garden Studio. This is a beautiful place to relax and create whatever you want. I teach one-to-one -one in watercolour tuition, so this is the perfect space. Today I'm going to create for you a wet in wet technique and a drag technique, obviously my favourite techniques creating a winter scene with the, um, my favourite area is Wardour at the moment, I keep thinking about it. I love Stourhead, but it's Wardour and Wardour Estate where the lakes are. I want to go back there again in the spring, can't wait. It's on my doorstep and it's in the Donhead area of Wiltshire. So I've got this vision in my head, so I want the pine forest behind maybe and then I want to do a reflective observation technique again with the movement of the lake. I want to try and do a blue sky, so we'll see. It might be quite pale. So today I'm going to use my very large bamboo brush. It's made of wool hair, so it's natural. And it just feels amazing when you start using it. So you've got individual bits of bamboo that I, I guess are kind of glued together. And then this, this wool is really thick and the hairs don't fall out hardly, they're really good. So then you dip your brush into the water and then into the paint. So I'm going to show you that process of how to do lots of backwashes because I want to get those colours on first. Hi. So I'm just showing you what I'm going to use today, or what I might need. So you know already, I've explained about this bamboo brush that I'm going to use. And then I've got my three colours. My three colours consist of yellow ochre, a coatman in Windsor and Newton. We've got De La Roni Artists. It's a cobalt turquoise. And then you've got a, a red deep. So they, these are the old Holland paints. I've started using these. They're, they're rather lovely. But you don't get very much in a tube. And they are quite expensive. So that's almost like an alizarin crimson mixed with a red madder. And then I might use some of these brushes. Particularly this one I love. Because I can drag the paint up. The tinted watercolour paper is Bockingford, £140, rough textured. So what I've done is I've soaked my wool Chinese bamboo brush, really soaked it well, and I've used an old saucepan because um, my bucket wasn't wide enough. And I'm going to just coat the paper, that's very important first. Obviously by dirt, using this brush you create sections of light. I'm going to skim across and then every wash I'm going to skim across to create my back washes. So what I'm gonna the first colour I'm gonna put on is my yellow ochre. I'm gonna just skim that over and it's just a great brush to get the colour on. You can move the brush in lots of different ways. You can sweep it backwards and forwards just to, and you can sweep it downwards as well if you want to. Beautiful colours together. So these are just the back washes. But what's going to happen is you're going to get a beautiful tonal balance of colour. I'm going 
going to tip. Just hold it from behind and then tip. So you get this ethereal, soft, pinky, dreamy, golden colour. So what I'm going to do next is the blue, because I want some blue. Slightly wet the brush again. Don't worry, you need a big table, nice long table. It doesn't matter if you get paint all over it. Here we go. So see how quickly this brush gets it on. Okay, it's wonderful for doing just lovely, beautiful, wide watercolours. going to create now the colours in the lake but I'm going to slightly do that as well for the movement but obviously I'll keep going back over it. You know this is, you could use this brush for doing seascapes, it would be amazing. Again this paper gives you a lovely mottled effect. There was one particular painting I did quite a while back called Twilight and um, it created this lovely granular grainy effect. Now another thing, don't worry about the, um, the hairs, can I show you how you can just pull them out with another brush. So what I've got is this lovely um, sort of glow, can you see that, the glow coming through this misty blue cold winter's light. Not going to worry about the sides too much. Okay. So I'm going to grab a different brush now. Use that one. This one you can use for calligraphy, this brush you know, for fine detail. I'm going to show you how to use it in a totally different way. So I'm going to go for a, quite a sort of purpley colour almost. Yeah, a lovely sort of lilac-y colour. Got to make quite a bit up. And then apply it. And sweep across. Just sweep across. Then introduce a bit more blue into that. Maybe a little bit of yellow. And what I want it to start doing, and I have to tip the paper, is I want that horizontal line that I've put on to draw up. Can you see that's doing that now? Because I've tipped it downwards. So it's going up into the sky almost. Move that to there. And then again a strong line when you put that horizontal line in, do it with conviction. Never he hesitate. Just do it. So you get this lovely sort of ethereal woodland effect starting to form. And you've got to create that height. The only way you'll create that height is by putting more colour on the horizontal base line. And you've got to do it while it's wet. That's the only way it's going to work. That's why it's a wet and wet technique. This takes me quite a while to build up the development of this. And then I start putting my fine detail in later on. very organic. 
and natural. It's all about experimenting with layers of colour. And you keep mixing the same three colours in, but every time you make a different colour with the three colour process, all the pigments are overlapping one another. It's just fascinating to watch it. It's a great exercise to do. It's a repetitive exercise, but it's a just lovely way of creating. So my band starts to get wider and wider because I want that backdrop of the forest. And then what I'm going to show you is then, as it starts drying, I'm going to do some dragging techniques of winter trees along the edge of the lake in front of the ethereal pine forest behind. Every time I do this, you can never replicate this. It's always going to be totally different, even if you use the same colours. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. What I'm going to start doing slightly is I'm just going to drag up some of this darker colour along the horizontal line. And then I'm going to just, again, I'm just dragging very carefully with this Chinese bamboo brush, lifting some of that colour from the horizontal line that starts off quite thin and it's gone quite wide. But I want it so like soft and ethereal. I don't want too much detail there. So what I'm going to start forming then is my, I'm just going to finish that bit. Let's just drag that up a little bit more just to get the height. Soften that out, bring it down. It's just playing around with it while it's wet. So here, this area here is where I'm going to start forming But again, I've got to put quite a dark colour on. So just here, yeah, I'm going to bring it down a bit more. We've got this sort of ice lake effect, which I quite like. If all that totally dries as well, I'm going to show, I'm going to go over that. mix on a piece of paper. We're in the studio today because we haven't been able to do wild camp uh, sorry not wild camping, wild painting outside today because it's chucking down with rain outside. What I'm going to do is just gonna sweep now. Just want to sweep across there. go over a wash that you put on but sometimes you just got to do that. And I want it sort of a bit more deeper and moodier and sweep across again. I want to get quite blue here to have that blue up in the sky. 
deeper blue down in the lake. Okay. Don't like what's happening there. A little bit of excess water is sitting on the paper. I just slightly buff that out. Can you see that? With a dry brush. That should be okay. What I'm trying to do now is get a strong enough colour because I want to just do these very dark trees just along the lake. So I'm mixing with this Chinese bamboo brush. You have to keep mixing all three colours to get this monochrome shade. Got like a grey. Test it out. And if that happens, again, sometimes that just happens. Again, just get rid of that. So I'm going to draw up a little bit wet. I have to be incredibly patient. What I'm going to do is just sort of put a little bit of an impression. Still a bit too wet really. So I've left it to not totally dry, the paper is still heavy with moisture, but it was too wet to apply the colour for these earthy trees in the foreground. So I'm going to start, I might even use, oh I can, yes. I just used the end of my bamboo brush just to see if that works, that's good. I'm going to start bringing in some winter trees just in the front. They won't be too big because they'll be like um, trees that grow by a river or a lake. And this is a lake. So again, I drag up. Ah. That's drying there, that's good. It's a gradual process, it's not instant. I haven't drawn out these trees. I am weaving in lots of different colours that I'm constantly mixing on my plate. A bit of blue in there almost, yes. I'm very tempted. Ah, there you go. Just going to slightly do a bit of that, maybe. I can always go back over that if I'm not sure about that. All it is is a, is a suggestion almost of the winter trees. Now, it takes a while to get used to using this 
Chinese bamboo brush. You have to just keep practicing with it. It's a very touchy-feely brush. It's not formal at all when you start using it. The hairs go all sorts of different ways and they separate, as you can see. Now, you see, because it's really dry this side, it's really working. That side, it was a little bit too wet. I probably started too soon, but that's not a problem. And again, this is something you can go back to if you want. If you just want to have a break, go back to it the next day. You can, because the main bit that you've done has been done. This is just the fine detail bit. And trees, winter trees are always very hard to do. Let's bring a little bit of that up there. Trying to imagine that I am there, that I've created a very different sort of light, which I didn't think I was going to do, but I'm actually really pleased with it. When you work like this, you can have a little bit of a plan because you're in the studio, but really at the end of the day, you've got to feel your work, you've got to feel it. And if you can't, and, and there's too much distractions or too much going on, you must stop and go back to it when you're ready again. Okay, let's bring that up there. Just slightly bring out that. Be gone a bit too thick in there, you see. So, if you go a little bit thick, you can use the end of the bamboo brush to just take some of it out. I don't want to, I'm not sure if I want to do it all the way along, but I might actually. Yeah, it works there. And if my, because um, I've got so much paint on this brush. If it gets a little bit dry, just dip it in the water slightly. Just again, just a tiny bit, just the top, just the, the ends of it, dip it in the water. And I'm just going to bring in a few reeds. And then what I'm going to start doing is the underneath bits of the bank, of the lake. I might go back to my trees, that's what I do, I, I get a bit bored. I do that with a lot of my work. I get bored when I'm working like this because it's not instant. I want to drag my brush underneath. That's it. Can you see that? Okay, sort of scribble a bit there like that. I don't want it too perfect. Let's just bring that over there. It's actually lovely in a way today being in here. It's moody, yes it's dark, we've had to put the lights on, but the sound of the rain outside is, is just a lovely feeling. bushier brush. I'm going to just go underneath there. I'm going to do the same all the way along. So it's it's not totally dry again, but it's almost. Now I'm going to show you. I've put this again this build build up of my horizontal lining and I've gone back over it. 
another brush on it and show you how I just keep blending out. You see that I'm sweeping across the top of it and sweeping that way to the right and dragging some of the paint. Again, my brush has gone a little bit dry, so then I dip it in to the water just slightly, not too much. Again, it's not dripping in water. And then I drag across there. Slightly giving a little bit of height through there, through the trees. These muted, there, look, okay. A little bit of a, a bit of wire there, I think. Coming across. about that. You know, so again, it's trial and error. It's all about experimenting with your shades, with your tones. Uh, rub it out a bit if you don't like. I'm not sure about that. I quite like that bit though. Now I've rubbed it out. There. I'll just put a little bit of that colour in there. And this is my filbert, which I quite like as well. in the denser bits. show you is I'm going to start softening underneath there, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a reflection but it will be so subtle because it's when the light's going the most it's very dark on the lake I do like these plummy earthy tones this time of the year. So oh, really, it's just a lot of scrubbing. What I'm doing is just a little bit of a highlight, slightly with the yellow ochre as well. Tends to work. And again, buff it out with your sable, because that's your blending brush. It's perfect for that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is, I can always go back to that, I haven't finished, I won't probably finish this today, there's an awful lot 
to do. Um, I can spend hours on this. But I'm, what I'm going to show you now is this release of this bank. I'm going to show you is the magic of when you just touch that bit of the bank and you want to just soften that out. And then I'm going to bring it down again, bring it down again. Okay, so I've released it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to wet. So I've got a little bit of a shadow from the trees along the edge of the lake. I'm just wetting. So some of those colours coming down, that's it. Right. So I'm going to use this brush again. But I'm going to obviously put lots of different shades on. But it's just giving you a, an impression of the reflections. In this case, they don't have to be so perfect because it's not so sharp. It's, you know, it's sort of at the end of the day, so there isn't much light on the lake where the reflections are. It's just a suggestion. Again, I just love these bamboo brushes. I just think they're wonderful for being expressive. You know, what you do is you start sort of adding just a similar colours to what you've put put in up above as well. here because I haven't quite I've got to go a bit further my reflections just slightly And again, if you get a bit bored, you know, if you just sort of, it, again, everything I do is like a, a repetition, almost, because that's what I see. Um, you can, like, leave that area. You can always go back to that again, as long as it doesn't totally dry. Again, you have to just keep observing your trees up above. They don't have to be too perfect, but it's just giving you that feeling, that idea that they're reflecting back into the water. as well, just by using a little bit of water to do this bit, 
I'm going to have to go across that just to soften that out. Can you see that? I'll do it now. Not too much water though. Just get your brush like a paddle almost. See? Like a paddle. Don't soften it too much. Just blending backwards and forwards. Very gently. See how it disappears? Slightly. Right. Probably going to have to go darker anyway along here. back to that. I feel that this is going to definitely challenge me as I start working on the reflections. finish that off. <laughs> now I'm standing up doing this but after a while I'll probably end up sitting down. But I feel that I can be more expressive by standing up, particularly when I'm working on something so large. I work flat because it's just easier to see it and to control the, when I'm doing wet and wet, to control it and I can, I'm not confined to an easel. concentrating on what I'm doing and observing all the time what I'm doing and making different colours up, different shades into the same colour all the time. I'll probably go back to that when it's dry, a little bit drier, bring that out up there. Incredibly soothing and therapeutic, just applying colours and blending and 
seeing what happens. So as it starts to dry a bit more, again we can get a little bit more squiggles and movement. For the branches. And as I start developing more and more, it starts to become even more real. My feelings really kick in and I, I just want to paint now. I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to paint. Okay, so I've put that down for now. There's an area there. I'll probably have to bring that out. I'm going to do that. Sometimes you just have to stop and then you have to think. And a lot of artists stop and they just walk away and they don't do any more. I'm not like that, I, I tend to just sort of keep going because <laughs> I get so into it. I 
I just use as much paint as I can on the plate. I'm going to squeeze some more paint out now, some turquoise, cobalt turquoise, it's a beautiful colour. I hope that's enough. And I'm going to go back over this. take some of the excess water off. What I'm going to do is go over this um, on dry, so it's, it's totally dry now. And I'm just going to go back over that and see what happens. It's all about being experimental. I need some more yellow. I'm just mixing, just deciding what shade I want. And then I'm going to test it out. So what I've done is I've just gone back over my water and I'm going to just slightly soften in areas. go back. Just go back to this again.
It's, ha it's amazing how many times you have to keep weaving colours in. Because again, with watercolour, it's very hard to tell sometimes. You put the colour on and it just fades out so quickly. So the hardest thing is your judgement. And then obviously the blending. I'm almost patting the colour on. Again, in my very tactile way, because it's all about feeling what you're doing. I hope you've enjoyed my wet and wet watercolour demonstration. I haven't totally finished it because I'm going to finish it another day and just tweak it in little areas but I feel I've done enough today. That's what I normally do. There's just little bits of fine areas in the reflections that I will just tweak out, but not too much. But this is what you can achieve. If you do it on a smaller scale, then that's fine. Um, but I hope this really helps you doing reflective observation and creating something from a horizontal line approach. Bye for now.